very good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am Dr. Selma Ambar, and our group was supposed to make recommendations about um, service providers, community service organizations, including NGOs, academia, and think tanks. Uh, may I request all the participants to please settle down and uh, keep silence and listen to the presenter, please? Uh, yesterday, our group uh, sat together in the boardroom and uh, we made recommendations after due deliberations. And uh, these uh, recommendations will be presented by my co-presenter, uh, Ma'am Hajira Beg. I would also like to introduce my panelists today. And uh, the mode of um, convening this session is uh, 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 Hajira Beg will uh, present the recommendations. And uh, this is followed by the explanations if you have an answer um, question and answer session. Um, our panelists are Dr. Saima Mubashra and Dr. Uh, Ma'am Saima Malik. Zunaya Chaudhary, Imdad Channa Saab, and Hasibu Rehman Saab. Now I uh, will invite Hajra Beg uh, to present uh, the recommendation uh, we made yesterday under the supervision of Ma'am Rebecca. And uh, it's a very thorough, uh, we made these recommendations after thorough discussion uh, so, Hajra will uh, present you the recommendations. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, some of the recommendations which were given by our group are, so, number one, the reporting line process is not satisfactory. It needs more publicity and media campaign. Second is more coordination needed among the various departments and the stakeholders. Number third is, there is need for more reporting and for individuals to take reporting as obligatory and mandatory. Number fourth is female officers may be better able to deal with TIP cases as some victims be reluctant to engaging with male officers. However, to be effective, female officers must have more resources such as transportation and police assets to assist with rescue operations. Number fifth is Awareness messages and identification of different concepts should be delivered in easy and common words. Number six is accountability is needed at all levels and agencies, and ownership is very important. Number seven, CSO support to LEAs and other stakeholders in translating the legal framework and SOPs into local, local languages should continue and is viewed as the best practice to be employed els elsewhere in the country. Utility of mobile phones and ro radios is very useful. Number eight is capacity building and network building of local community-based organizations and CSOs to strengthen their role in district TIP committees and enhance their capacity on referral mechanisms at local lag levels. Eight, Helpline respondents should be better trained and should know how best to refer the call. Number nine, the existing government helplines should be better resourced and distinct non-emergency helplines could aid in addressing TIP-related issues. Tenth, streamline the process of attaining CNIC and registering exploited labors in Label Force database. Twelfth, there is need to introduce and implement labor laws more resources, greater authority, and autonomy of labor inspectors, and due diligence on registration process to address middlemen and contracted labor suppliers. And the last is, university students should be made aware of the risks of irregular immigration. These were the recommendations which were given by our group. Now, if you all have any questions, our experts are there to answer our questions. So over to the panelists. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Uh, before before we open the hall for sure. question and answer, can I say something regarding sure. our recommendations? Sure, sure. Uh, if you can look on your screens, our recommendation number five and seven relates to the use of language uh, in uh, disseminating the information uh, related to trafficking in person. 
uh, yesterday while we were having uh, this discussion in a consultative meeting, uh, one recurrent theme that kept coming back in the conversation was the lack of reporting on the part of a victim and the community member. Uh, here, I would like to invite your attention to very important fact that people don't report cases because they don't identify the instances of human rights violation and crime for that matter uh, as problematic. I can list a number of scenarios which I'm 100% sure that all of us sitting under this roof are very familiar in our daily life and uh, there are instances of child labor or trafficking, but nobody bats an eye. It does not create or raise any alarm or surprise just because of the fact that this is a part of a lived reality of uh, many communities here. So here the role of language becomes vital because this issue is not only a legal issue, it has a very um, prominent social and linguistic side and which I believe uh, needs to be reiterated on the forums like these. Uh, in order to identify a behavior, it should have a very clear name and a very specific, precise definition which is equally accessible to all the members of the community. Uh, with, with this view, if we look for the words like human trafficking, bonded labor, domestic servitude, we do not have equivalents um, of these words. The natural and widely known equivalents for any of these words in any of our local languages. On the contrary, there are certain expressions, words, idioms uh, in our language that might uh, encourage or support these practices, uh, for, for instance, in many of our local, uh, because we are uh, agrarian culture and agrarian culture, uh, women are, because we are talking about uh, women and uh, girls here, because 70, statistically speaking, 77% of trafficking uh, victims are women. So the way women are described in our local cultures in agrarian societies is that many times they are listed as commodity alongside the other material possessions that men have. Uh, at the same time, we have expressions uh, that equate or, or, or the common expressions that apply to women as well as the cattle owned by a landowner. Uh, other than that, if we uh, look towards this issue with, from an other angle, uh, the discourses surrounding these issues uh, reflect a certain pattern that we don't have a very strong negative connotation words for the perpetrator, but at the same time, we have very negative connotation associated with certain words associated with the victims. One point that I would also like to make, but very consciously because it might invite certain criticism or it might lead to some uh, cultural stereotyping, but. Uh, the statement that I am making is based on a thing or two I know about the language ideologies and the how language work in uh, communities in this part of the world, is that as a culture, um, we are a little bit resistant to the technical jargon or matter of the fact discussion. So in order to appeal to the masses, we have to communicate with them in the languages that are reflect their lived experience, the languages that appeal to them. The only type, uh, time the this hall clapped, and I'm talking about the voluntary warm clap, not the ritualistic one that happened at the end of every session, was the when someone recited a piece of poetry in Urdu. So, so that connected to most of us and people compelled, feel compelled to clap for the person. So this is how we should reach out to the masses. Uh, imagine, uh, sorry, if we have a paucity of time, I can cut short here because it's a long it's a story. Point but... very well taken, I <laughs> yeah. totally agree with your okay. point. I think we should open the forum for a yeah, question and answers. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Can we take questions from the audience? I see a hand raised here. Can the usher move, move quickly, please? On correlation of things like the CNIC, which was one of the recommendations, because it shows a significant statistical correlation and can certainly be a contributing factor. And we also discussed how women in shelters may lack this. So I'll, I'll turn it back over to the panelists. 
assalamu alaikum everyone uh, this is hasib from social welfare department so i work as a statistical officer over there so in last year we registered about 10078 cases in darul amaan shelter homes of punjab and we had this data we had this uh, i guess 11th point or in which we said that there's need to be a database maintained by the uh, labor department so the point i was making was that most of the victims like in darul amaan and such women like they are referred from most of the time from police fia and even from labor department they don't have their cnics i mean in out of these 10078 900 9300 didn't have cnics or they said they don't have it and so this is again a problem like we need to register them at some platform i mean at the very first encounter that you i mean at the brickelins or wherever you find them so we don't first of all, this is a challenge that we will have to face when maintaining a database so if an if an if a victim comes again to our darul amaan we don't know how to track her out because we don't have a unique id so you need a cnic or some unique id to identify to identify the victim secondly uh, we were all talking about the education of the victim right so out of these uh, women 6090 women were illiterate but on the contrary when they were asked about the education of their of their abuser that's about uh, 8000 they were illiterate i mean and out of them, some of them uh, we didn't have information or they don't they didn't have information of their abuser like they were about 5000 but we can assume like they were also illiterate because they didn't know so and then people also talked about the economic conditions like economics is the reason and i believe yes that's mostly true because about 98% uh, or 98.5% were facing some sort of economic crisis i mean if i just give a break out 33% of them didn't have enough money for basic food uh, not enough and 30 23% didn't have for all their needs and 17% of the children uh, they didn't have as enough money and the resources for children's schooling and medical treatment and about 23% didn't have enough for the basic clothing so these are some of the statistics that we that these are all registered cases that i'm talking about and we have those in our mis and so this is just something for you guys to look into the higher ups here that, like we are talking about so evidence is the key this is an empirical evidence we have on ground so economics education i mean they are equally important but mostly i see the economics is the problem because 98% have were facing economic problems and only about 70 to 60% were illiterate so these are some of the statistics yeah. that i was just talking about Thank madam you. rebecca thank you sir do we have any other question from the audience i think we all agree that um, economic empowerment is one of one of the key way through which we can counter this menace do we have any other question from the audience I think they all agree with your recommendations. <laughs> right. Thank you very much uh, to all our panelists. May I request you all for a group photo? Do we have a question? Okay, we do have a question. Right. We'll take this question now. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Iram Kosar and I'm from the rural area of the Sind. I have uh, seen your recommendations. So I have a question that why you have ignored the school side, the educational institution and especially the rural areas because the mostly victims are reported from the rural areas of the sind but all the presentation which i have uh, heard i didn't see any of the recommendations for the educational institutions and for the rural areas so what do you recommend for that thank you we could talk about the education uh, yes uh, if, if you want to respond it's okay uh Sanam Malik here from Sin Child Protection Authority. We were talking about the rural area, but uh, if we see the data, like uh, which we have collected in last five years, so almost uh, more than 70 percent cases are reported uh, from urban area. But uh, it is not the neglected area. We are already covering uh, rural area, and uh, we have formed a district uh, coordination committee. and uh, again uh, they are having a village coordination committee so they are rapidly uh, making like a awareness raising program mass awareness uh, campaign so it is not the neglected area it is being covered and uh, there is no any kind of discrimination on the part of a ruler or urban area thank you 
Do we have any other question from the audience? Okay, I see a hand raised here. Can the usher move towards this table, please? Thank you. Okay, last question and then we'll wrap up the session. Thank you, I have a comment to make. When we are working with, uh, when we are, uh, throughout these two days we are saying, um, we are using the word victim, but we are also talking about, at the same time, about her re rehabilitation, reintegration back to the society. So taking the opportunity from the floor of this conference, I would recommend that instead of using the word a victim all the time, why can't we say the survivor? Because we are all not st making her stigmatized, but we want to her, her to be back into life. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a comment. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Zanaya Chaudhary, and uh, I'm working uh, in Punjab Police. Uh, and actually, Punjab Police Initiative, a new department by the name of Police Tahafas Merkas, and uh, I am uh, appointed as a victim support officer. Uh, and being a, uh, if I talk about the responsibilities, because uh, many persons doesn't know uh, the, what is our responsibilities and how we have to tackle the victims and the whole uh, commun different communities uh, of the society. So uh, we are uh, specially facilitating to the uh, vulnerable communities. For example, transgender person, a person with different ability, uh, deaf and mute persons, drug abusers, uh, mentally challenged persons, and uh, especially the domestic violence and tips as well. Uh, if we came to know any kind of uh, uh, complaints regarding the uh, tips and uh, all things, because uh, being a transgender person, uh, we can uh, f see many women and uh, the men as well, uh, those who are going through many things, but they are not vocal and they are not comfortable to go to the police station. But yes, now uh, we are sitting in police uh, khidmat markers and uh, in police khidmat markers, police tahafa centers created by IG Punjab, Dr. Usman Anwar. And we are trying to facilitate the whole uh, communities, even genders and the religious minorities as well. You people can come and uh, uh, complain over there, but uh, the problem is there, uh, people are not comfortable. They uh, thought that uh, there is no any kind of uh, results. Uh, with all that, I give you, I, I really want to give you surety that uh, being a victim support officer, we are, we have to follow, follow the whole case. And at the end, we, ha we are also, facilitating, give them, giving them lawyers and uh, uh, that even the police officers and investigations of officers are also bound to, uh, strictly bound to uh, give the results to the victims. So thank you so much. Thank I you. just want to give an information to thank you people. You. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Well taken.